Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Hope you all are doing well in this cold weather that many of us have experienced in the south. But the days are warming up, the snow's melting off. We're getting into some colonies that we threw some patties in. We're a little behind in our season this year, but you know, ahead, behind, it's, it's never on time it seems. We're going to get into three different sets of colonies. We've had a lot of people asking questions about the Kloss Hive Dome. How is that hive doing? So we're going to check that real quick. We're going to check a colony here in a little bit that had a good bit of brood. A lot of people thought I killed it because I opened it up when there was snow on the ground like there is today. And we're going to check and see if they're actually growing, even though we just went through a whole week of ice and snow. And we were out of power for almost six days, and a lot of other people were as well. So let's get into these two colonies right here. This, All of these colonies right here were made in August. And so if you want to see how those colonies were made, I'm going to leave a link up here, and it's the video on how we made every single one of these. It doesn't show you us making them all because that take quite a while, but it does show you what we take from the big colonies in August in order to make these up, and we used mated queens. So let's get in here. I'm hoping to see a little bit of brood, but these are um, pretty heavily carny, and also it's just uh, been really cold. All right. You can see we have these uh, little inner cover thingies. You see the clusters down in here and a pound of Ultra B patty. And we'll check this one just real quick here in a second. Now you're probably seeing this over here and wondering what this is. This is a, uh, well goodness, I can't remember the name. It's a picket frame lifter. I'll leave a link in the comments below. We're going to try this out. I've been wanting to try it out for several months. I've had it, but the weather just hasn't been that great um, for that. So I'll, I'll leave my frame feeders in here over winter. And I'm looking right now, one, two, three, four. You know, we're looking at about six frames or so of bees. Well, I guess I could use this tool right here. So you just slide it in like this. It goes underneath the frames and you're supposed to keep that there. And you kind of use the adjacent frames or boxes to uh, pull this out. And I imagine just like hive tools are, it works better when things are warmer. Uh, that's one of the issues that you'll have with hive tools or any tools. That propolis and beeswax is a lot cooler. So and you can kind of pick that up just like that. And uh, it's stainless steel made in the United States of America. So. Right here we've got a really nice frame of honey and food stuff. So a little bee bread down in there. We're just going to set this to the side. I'm going to use this more in the future and try it out when we've got some warmer weather. So let's see if they're eating this patty or if there's any small hive beetles in here. They're, they're eating it a little bit. You can see how they've uh, consumed it a tiny bit, but they really dropped consumption. But we were getting highs in the... Um, upper 20s Fahrenheit and it was getting down in the teens and you know just really slowed consumption for these colonies they just had that tight cluster so I think typically at this point in the year oh, I know they would they have eaten through at least half of that patty or more just gonna quickly go down here not seeing any brood typically I want to even pull those frames out just spread them apart go to the middle frame that's what we're gonna do on the next one this one's pretty light right here. And I'm just looking to see if there's any eggs or brood. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of brood and eggs over in this top left area. Not a whole lot though. I'd say if, as long as we can get a little bit of pollen. Look at those bees down in there, by the way. Look at all those dead bees. Now they haven't been able to get a cleansing flight for probably 10 days. So that's probably just natural uh, mortality. You know, there's probably a few of them towards the edge of the cluster that got a little too cold, but that's, that's not freaking me out right there. There's uh, several bees in the snow right there at the entrance on all of our colonies. And you know, these cool snaps are not easy on the bees, but at the same time, a good colony will be all right. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing some brood over here. There's the queen. She's starting to swell up a little bit. Her abdomen's looking pretty good. So there she is. Nice little blue dot right there. Yeah, she's definitely looking a little bit bigger than I would expect. So, uh, you know, I'm seeing 
brewed in a pattern about right there. And that was kind of the way it was on that other frame. And uh, yeah, we're seeing some calves brewed over here. Not a lot. I'm seeing some eggs down in there. We just need to get a good pollen flow to really kick things into gear and uh, eliminate these cold snaps. So, you know, they're really not eating the pollen patties as fast as I would like to see. I had somebody ask me a question about that the other day, and these cold snaps will do that. They'll just drop that consumption down. Um, things are behind, and it's not necessarily all that bad. Woo, okay, I just got one. And uh, you can see that stinger right here. It didn't get me too good. We're just gonna go away from that. Well, kind of like that right there. There we go, and I just pull it out the right way. And that way I didn't get all that venom pumped into me. I didn't break off the stinger. Th that really stinks. And uh, unfortunately for that bee, I, I crushed it, but sometimes that happens. It happens actually more to me if I wear gloves because I can't feel what I'm doing. Nothing like a bee sting to let you know that you're alive. Get out of there. You know, but this is what I'm seeing pretty universally throughout these uh, August made splits. You know, just tiny bits of brood. Again, we're a little bit behind, but I don't think it is necessarily a bad thing. I think the, the trees are behind it on pollen and stuff as well um, and, and blooming out. So I think it's, everything's okay. We'll, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Every year is different. You know, farmers realize that you just you got to expect the unexpected. And I'm trying to be more that way. Just, uh, just let it go. What else can you do? Oh, excuse me, B. Got its little foot in there. You know, we're not going to go ahead. I, I, we can we can check this other colony, but I think we're just going to go ahead and skip on to the next thing. So here we are at the Kloss Hive Dome, and many people have been asking about how the bees are doing in this, and you can look down and see that there are bees alive down in here. Where's that condensation everybody said was going to build up on this thing? And we've had our coldest winter weather that we've had for years, and it wasn't for a couple days. It was for over a week, lots of ice, lots of snow, you know, dropping down into, you know, for us, 10 degrees Fahrenheit is very cold. And I'm not seeing a bunch of condensation here. The only areas that I've noticed over the winter, and I try to check these things every couple weeks just to see what's going on. The only, I've seen a little bit of condensation build up in here, but it always seems to roll off to the side. I'm not recommending everybody get these things. I'm just making observations um, you know, obviously I'm not going to be buying these things for my entire operation. I don't need these things for my bees to do well, but I do like trying out new products. The, the, oh, the biggest problem is over here in the corners, it, the, there's moisture that's collected up against, there's tons of it over here. And there's just tons of water from where I believe that condensation has just rolled off to the side and built up underneath here. That's, that's fine. That's very normal, it's what healthy colonies do. Excess moisture goes to the outside away from the cluster and we can, we can live with that. But if you don't have this protected, like this is microcrystalline and paraffin wax dipped box, so it doesn't make a difference there's water on it, but if you don't have it protected by some type of paint or good sealer, it's going to rot your boxes a lot quicker using something like this. So let's just get some smoke in here, see what those bees are doing. So far, so good. You can see we could, if we had a sugar brick or we have patties, we can see how much they've consumed without actually getting down into here. So that's nice. Um, they really haven't consumed a whole lot, which isn't too surprising. It's been extremely cold. Power's been out for several days. And there's a small hive beetle already trying to get into our patties. No more, I say. So let's just uh, kind of get over into here and pull one of these frames out so we can get a little space to work with. Everything's so much harder right now because it's nice and cold. So this frame I'm seeing food stores. That's good. Just a good bit of food. It's still going to be a while before a lot of natural nectar comes in. It's, you know, 
third week of February. I don't, you know, especially in a year like this where the, the trees and the plants seem to be behind as well with the bees um, from what we've seen in the last couple of years, then, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but we're probably looking at the first week of April before we start seeing any decent nectars come in. So there's still a long ways to go for these bees uh, food-wise. And, you know, bees can definitely starve between now and spring for sure. I think more bees starve between now and spring than they do in winter. So good bit of food there. And right now I'm looking at probably a four frame cluster of bees. And as long as it's healthy, that's good. You know, it's not a production size colony per se, but it's still a very nice. I just cut down over into here. I think if we're gonna have any brood, it's gonna be on one of these two frames. See those eggs right in here? I don't know how well you can see that, but this is where the pollen patty was sitting down and those are small hive beetle eggs right there. And the bees couldn't get to them because it was sandwiched between the wax and the patty. And those beetles are already trying to lay in those patties in February. The colony just keeps it so warm. And here's a bunch right here. I'm gonna scrape all those up and get them out of here because those uh, small hive beetle larvae will work on those patties. So typically, when I feed patties this time of the year, it's more mild and the bees have already consumed a significant amount of those patties and got it all down, but that has not been the case this year. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of brood over here. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it over here into the light. Yeah, so there's a there's a good bit of brood in here for this uh, for what I expect to see out of this looks pretty good. You know, I think if you probably added the adjacent frame of this up, you're probably looking at uh, you know maybe 75% of a frame total of brood. Now some of that is in the egg stage, some of that's in the larva stage, and there's some capped brood as well. So they're just starting to get going good. And, little colony like this will not have a lot of brood right now. Let's go check a bigger colony out and just uh, we're going to scrape this up real quick, throw the patty back on and everything together, but we'll see you over at the next time. We did a video about two weeks ago. We were in snow just like this. It was cooler. It was working up at about 42 degrees, but we were still in the 30s. And we got into this hive. I had several people comment saying that we were crazy for cracking the lid. We were crazy for pulling brood out real quick and we were gonna kill that hive or kill that brood. And we're gonna pop in this hive and look and see if I actually did that. Also, uh, I, I kind of equate this to, you know, my kids. They run outside and it'll be like 36 degrees and they'll be out there seeing Papa and Grandma, you know, and they'll, Jimmy will be in his shorts and running barefoot. You know, bees, just like kids, can handle it for a couple seconds. You know, they'll get out there for a couple minutes and they come back in the hive and oh, burr, burr. All that stuff, mommy, can I have hot chocolate? Any excuse for hot chocolate, you know? I can't say that I don't look for those excuses. So we got some bees up top, so that, hey, there's still some live bees in here, all right. This week's been so cold too, so, wow. We haven't killed them. I'm shocked. I haven't smoked them yet either. Wow, they're really doing a good job on that patty too. Yeah, I don't see uh, any dead bees in here at all. I see hungry bees. And if we had some more mild weather like we're getting this week, if we can start getting some more real pollens in here, I think this colony would be off to the races. But let's see if we can find that frame and see if there is still brood left. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the brood towards the edges was actually damaged in this cold spell. Look at that, we got a little bit of small hive beetle larvae in that patty, just a little bit of those little grubs or larvae, however you want to get technical about it. But anyways, let's see if we can find that brood. I cannot remember. Shoot, it might have been in the top box. Can't keep all those details in my mind. Doubt it was this one. Been wrong before. There's a little bit of brood on this frame. You know, have I smoked them yet, Laurel? Did I? Yeah. Okay. Can't keep track. I have to have Laurel. That's why Laurel's for to make sure I don't get lost. All right, so we got some, we get the lighting. 
We still have brood over here. Actually, I see some emerging brood, and it's been stinking cold. Now, this is a double deep. Most of the honey weight's in that top box. There's a good bit of weight up in there. They're still down in here laying up some brood. All right, we got some larvae. Hey, let's see if we can get some uh, a good angle on this frame right here. See if you can get down in there, Laurel, and see all that. There's eggs, larvae, capped brood. Excuse me, bees. Now, it is actually about 55 degrees today. If you don't have any good reason to get into your hives, then 55 or above is a better temperature. And still in 55 and 60, you can chill brood and, and set the bees back. So you can't be keeping them out for a long period of time. And, you know, if there's wind, then it's even more sensitive and all that kind of stuff. But these bees seem to be just fine. If we can just get a good pollen flow, and they'll just consume that patty up the rest of the way, and we'll just be off to the races. Yeah, we got a little bit of capped brood on this frame as well. Not a whole lot. So if we put it all together, I'm gonna check the top box real quick. I just can't help myself. And, uh, you know, maybe about two frames worth of brood, and that's a big deal. You start that little engine, and you check this colony in uh, late April. Clover really starts producing and other things. It's gonna be awesome. All right. Smoke these bees up. Don't crush any. All right, let's pop this lid. I don't think there was brood up in here last time, but we'll just see what's going on. Probably just pull one of these two frames apart and see what's happening. Probably just eating on some honey and sugar syrup. Yeah, there's. this feels like there's weight in it. Yes, there is. So this is pretty much all foodstuffs, which is good. And the next frame is nothing but foodstuffs and pretty much all those. So they're just coming up in here and getting a snack. If there's a little, if there's brood in there, it's probably at the very bottom of the frames and not very much. So we're just gonna put this hive back together. And again, don't be fooling around getting your colonies when you don't need to. But if you think they might be light on food, you can throw a sugar brick or mountain camp sugar, or you think something needs to be done, you can do it in cold weather. Don't do it if you don't need to though, but I was throwing patties on because typically this time of the year, we've already had the maples really blooming hard. And this year, uh, you can see uh, there's just limbs all over the ground. There's just limbs everywhere. It's uh, the whole yard's in disarray, but there's just this, it hit our power line. We've been without power, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, we'll let you go. Thanks for watching our videos and we'll see you next time.